position to make Floyd Mayweather overextend and, and land the shot. Conor is good about making people overextend and playing that range and distance and making people think that they're in the right distance to hit him. In reality, they're not. You've seen him do it to Josiata. You've seen him do it to uh, Eddie Alvarez. He puts himself in a, in, a, in a predicament. He's always doing this. Granted, he doesn't have his kicks, um, but I think he can do it with his hands. One last question for me. You were just saying before that one of the reasons, uh, you know, you being active is one of the reasons sometimes you don't have competition at your weight division or, or that's the perception. That being so, then do you see a, a chance where you may need to have some some fighters from different divisions come down because you are so active? Well, I mean, if they do, then that's fine. I mean, they got. Okay. But you wouldn't way. fight them directly. They would need to first fight. No, somebody no, first. no. I would say to fight them directly and fight somebody first. I'm gonna see why not. If, if you're serious about it, just keep fighting. You make. It's almost like this. I remember when I became when I got into UFC, and I fought Kiyomoto, and then I fought no. So when I got the UFC bantamweight championship title fight. It started when I lost my first fight to Brad Pickett, then I fought Nick Pace, then I fought Demasi Page on short notice, then I fought Key Yamamoto, and then I fought uh, Miguel Torres. And Dominic Cruz was running through everybody. I worked my way up to that title defense. So I was ready and prepared. I wasn't bitching like, oh man, I should the first one. If they came out of a 115 pound weight class, and let's say I can make it, I would not go down. And let's say they had a champion established, I would go down. I almost feel like you get more of a a, 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 a longevity of your career. You know what I mean? Like, let's say I went up, let's say I go up to 135, right? Immediately, right? And I got a title shot immediately, and I just got the bricks beat off me. Then, then it's like, oh, okay, we do it then. But let's say I went to 135, and I got, uh, I'm, I'm gonna test myself, and we see how my weight cut goes, I'm gonna put some muscle on, and see how it goes. Then I beat, let's say I beat Ajax Strum, or whatever. I beat one guy. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get one more. Then I get another one. Then I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for the title shot. I I I I made this story of myself. I was a champion at 125. I came up and I beat the top contenders at 135. Now I'm gonna take out the big dog. And if I beat him, that's for me. That's the most you can capitalize on your longevity career or whatever. Or you can go to 135 and let's say you win the belt and then you fight a bigger dude and it's like, gosh, you, know, you always want to plan for the longevity of your capitalization. Unless they're like, we're gonna pay four million dollars to go do this. And you fucking. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I'm sure. You were carrying a box. How would you approach that? Let's say you were fighting Lomachenko, someone who was close to your weight. How would you approach that? Would you would you try to outbox this is, that person? Distant control. When Lomachenko, I've watched him. He's very good about distant control. He likes to go one, two, and jump hard right to the angle. And then when his opponents cover up, that's when he's able to get those angles. So with him, you would have to do a lot more distance control with him because he likes to move his speed a lot. Then he also does some walking down when he walks you down and, and, and tries to play with you. So with him, it's always about distance control because the way he moves. So you always have to look at it. And I, I, I literally, I, I talked to Matt about this. I was like, Matt, if I was gonna go into boxing fight, what, what would I do different in training? He goes, well, you've been boxing your whole entire career. Me. What the fuck you been doing? You, and I've had boxing fights before. So, like I said, you always look at the, the opponent. Like with Mayweather, he's more of a different cookie because you have to get. I would, if I was to fight Mayweather, I would have to try to get him to overextend. I need to get him to overextend so I can land that shot where he's vulnerable to make him get wobbled. Um, and also, this is control with that. DJ, um, if Connor has a good performance uh, on Saturday night, how good could that do for the UFC and the popularity of all you fighters? I think, I mean, it's not popular of all our fighters. I mean, if Connor goes out there and whoops, you know, Mayweather's with his ass, he's the only one who's going to be benefiting from him as a fighter standpoint. You know, just because we were for the same company or fight for the same company doesn't mean I'm going to benefit him from whatever. Only way I would benefit from it is that if people come over and start buying UFC pay-per-views, that's the only way, like, Conor McGregor wins, I'm not gonna get a fucking Rolls Royce in my garage. You should say. I mean, that's how I kind of feel like you're. If Conor McGregor does good, you, no, how's no, that going? I, you? I was uh, pretty much in the same was uh, Mark was asking you. I mean, calling Lomachenko, calling some uh, boxer that could give you a uh, Rolls Royce in your house if you got a pay per view like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, so you asked me like, if Conor McGregor does well, it will open up the door for Zufa Box, and if Zufa Box and came and goes, hey, we have a fight for you. We want you to fight Lomachenko. Last all, like, okay, well, how much money is going to be? Because he's a tough son of a bitch. And they're like, okay, it's going to be ten million. Okay, sign me up. Where's where's the line? I'll do it. Yes, that'd be awesome. Thing to happen. One more question, Demetrius. Um, you know, I think over the last couple of years, uh, there's always this argument: who's the goat? Who's the the pound for pound best? I you or John Jones? No. Well, the thing is, is that now that you know Jones is facing a potential second, you know, violation. We've been here before. Yeah. So, the, you guys forget there's a past, well, this is obviously the past, but there was one time where John Jones wasn't inactive for, I think it was a long time, and I was the number one pound pound fighter in the world, 
and then he got reinstated as active, then he was just like that. Do you think my breakfast tastes any different? Do you think me wiping my ass that day changed any different? It did not. So this whole downfall of what's going on with him, which I don't wish that upon anybody, do you think I'm excited that I'm back to number one and I'm clicking my heels together? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, the fans are always going to perceive and change their mind on certain different things and try to discredit you whenever they give you a chance to. So for me, I don't even worry about it anymore. I just worry about staying healthy, going out there, fighting, and that's it. Hey guys, thanks. What?